Hey guys, this is Dr. Sangeeta to the next level teaching from Dental Patshala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way. And what happens when somebody met a car traffic accident or any accident and injured the face? Now there are high chances that there may be the fracture of the zygomatic bone. So only because zygomatic bone has four processes that we will be covering in the today's video because of these four processes zygomatic bone is not an isolated bone it is attached to other bones also so there is a fracture of a complex not only the zygomatic fracture but the complex of the zygomatic fracture and in today's video we are going to talk about the zygomatic or complex fracture so let's get started <laughs> Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any of the future videos. So today's video, till now that we have covered the zygomatico maxillary complex fracture classification and the clinical features. Now it's time to discuss the treatment. So what happens when a patient has a zygomatico complex max, zygomatico maxillary complex fracture? So in that case, we have two approaches. One is if the fracture segments are undisplaced. So the fracture segments are in its position. But we don't have to give plates this time. Because this uh, because we don't have to stabilize it. Because zygomatic bone can stabilize its own. Because it has a temporal fascia. Now the mesotrum muscle which is pulling it from down also we have the temporal fascia which is pulling it from the above so the temporal fascia is keeping it in the zygomatic bone keeping it in the position so zygomatic bone the mesotere is pulling zygomatic bone down but we also have this time we also have unlike the mid facial fracture this time we also have the temporal fascia which is pulling it up so we don't have to give plates we can also treat it with the help of the non-plating, the non-internal non fixation method. So we have, this time we have the indirect reduction. But if, but if there is a displacement at the frontozygomatic suture, then uh, of course we have to go for open reduction and internal fixation. But if there is no displacement of the fracture segments, then we can go for the indirect reduction. So if the fracture is a non-committed fracture, and the zygomatic fracture is there, but there is no orbital involvement. So we can go for the indirect reduction. That is, we don't have to put plates. We don't have to do internal fixation. Or if there is isolated zygomatic arch fracture, there is no orbital fracture. Basically, only the zygomatic arch is fractured. Then we have to only treat the zygomatic arch. So zygomatic arch all alone can be in its place because of the temporal fascia, which is there, which is... Uh, taking its it, putting its in its proper position so in that case we can go for always for the indirect reduction now there are two approaches one is that we are going the direct approach the incision but we have to put the incision of course because we want it to place it in the, its proper position so we have two approaches the first one is we go through with the direct approach so indirect reduction we have two approaches one is the direct approach in which we are approaching the zygomatic arch directly. So we are giving a coronal incision, reflecting all of the flap and uh, uh, reaching it, reaching the zygomatic arch and reaching the zygomatic arch directly. But there is a problem with that. If we are giving a coronal inc incision, mostly it results in the scar hair loss. So it's a result in the scar alopecia. And also sometimes complication of the temporal hollowing also is there. So the adverse effect of the complication is far worse than the fracture itself. So most of the time the surgeon go for the indirect. So we have indirect approaches. So the indirect approaches, the two common approaches are the Gillies temporal approach. So the Gillies temporal approach as well as the Keynes approach. So Keynes approach is basically a lateral approach in which we are going laterally the, in the maxillary vestibular region and from down we are going. Gillies temporal approaches from up we are going. So from the temporal fascia we are giving an incision here and we are going from the upper part. Keen approaches we are going from the oral. So this is a kind of an intra-oral intra approach. 
so this keens approach is transoral we can say we are going from the lateral part of the maxilla so lateral maxillary vestibular incision which is given in the upper gingival buccal incision and from there we are going up into the zygomatic bone so like that we are going from the molar and like that we are going up in the inside inside the zygomatic bone we are going and we are elevating it and keeping it back into its position so coming to the gillies approach which is our today's topic wherein we have to go from the temporal region from the temporal fascia we have to give the incision then to understand this first you should understand the anatomy of the temporal fascia so that you know how to go how to give this approach and mostly this question is also a frequently asked question so it is very important for you to understand this approach so see what happens this is the temporal region right so this one is the temporal region now we have the temporal fascia so upper superior to this is the superficial temporal fascia so like that there is also a superficial temporal fascia like this so there is also superficial temporal which is an actually extension of the epineurosis so this is extension of the epicranial epineurosis so this uh, superficial temporal fascia or we can say the temporal parietal fascia this is a pseudo fascia this is not a true fascia this is the extension of basically the epicranium epineurosis so once and this actually once we first reflect this so this fascia the pseudo fascia it can, it is used mostly for the plastic surgeries so first we reflect this this is very thin fascia then then in the temporal fossa region we have the true fascia which is our deep temporal fascia now also this this deep temporal fascia has two parts one is the superficial so this is very thick this is like a thick mass so dense thick sheet so this is like a dense thick white sheet this true fascia so this true fascia starts from the superior temporal line or the superior nuchal line we can say so it starts from the superior temporal line and in the superior temporal line basically superiorly the temporal uh, the temporal fascia the superior extension is the superior temporal line and inferior extension is basically our zygomatic bone so if you can see the upper and the lower border so the if you reflect this now the upper part has only one only there is one part and if we if you look at the inferior parts there are two sheets so upper it has one and lower it has two so the a lower segment has two sheets the lower segment has the up, outer sheet and the inner sheet the outer sheet is attached to the outer margin so outer sheet is attached to the outer margin of the zygomatic arch and if we see the inner margin is attached to the inner margin of the zygomatic arch so this is a thick sheet so super this is the deep temporal fascia which has the super, see suppose this is the superficial part and inner one is the inner part so the superficial part has the vessels and the nerves so the superficial part has the supi, the superficial temporal vessels so the superficial temporal artery we have two branches it gives of two branches the super, superficial temporal artery is the anterior branch and the posterior branch so the anterior branch of the superficial temporal artery is used between the, so incision when we are giving the gillies temporal approach we have to make sure that we are not dissecting these artery because there will be lot of blood right so we are giving an incision between the, these two branches of the superficial temporal artery so we have to go up and we have to go a little bit sideways so we have to go basically somewhere around 2.5 cm from both the sides so we have to give this incision which is close to the close to this incision close to the anterior part of the superficial temporal artery so basically we go from the ear we go 2.5 uh, cm uh, ahead so this incision we give and also we have the nerves so we have the auricular temporal nerve so this is the auricular temporal nerve also we have so this is in, present in the superficial part once we reflect this superficial part so it has from the superior part it is from the superior temporal line and from the inferior see from the anterior it has the frontal zygomatic arches and from beneath from the inferior part it has the upper and lower border of the zygomatic arch and if you see the if you see what is the floor of the temporal fascia so if you look at the floor of the temporal fascia then we have this sterion which is a combination of four bones so it is a h shaped as you can see this is a h shaped suture 
which ha which has two bones so this is the sphenoid bone right the the, um, the uh, what do you call this greater wing of the sphenoid so sphenoid bone also we have covered when i have told you about the osteology in the mid phase that i have covered the sphenoid bone the greater part of the sphenoid bone then we have the frontal bone then we have the parietal bone and then we have the temporal bone so this suture is composed of the greater wing of the sphenoid frontal bone the parietal bone as well as the temporal bone so this part is the floor of the superficial uh, sorry temporal fascia okay then we are reflecting this superficial this deep temporal fascia now between first of all before we reflect this between these two layers also we have fat or superficial temporal artery or the zygomatic or temporal nerve so these all these arteries and nerves here and after we reflect this so this is the inner part right this is the outer part of the temporal fascia this is the inner part of the temporal fascia once you reflect this the inner part of the temporal fascia i am going to reflect it and yes we have reflected so the inner part is attached to our temporalis muscle as we know this temporal temporalis muscle start from the inferior temporal line now as you can see this superficial fascia starts from the superior temporal line and this temporalis starts from the inferior temporal m temporal line so it has the anterior fibers which are the vertical and the posterior fibers which are more like a horizontal or the oblique fibers so basically these this is a fan shaped muscle now the temporal the superficial temporal fascia which was up till the zygomatic arch but the temporal uh, uh, muscle is inserted up into the coronoid process so it has it has gone beneath the zygomatic arch if you can see it has gone beneath the zygomatic arch so now this fascia is up till the zygomatic arch and the temporal uh, muscle is beneath the zygomatic arch so we are taking actually instrument and we are reaching between these two between these two if you see i am reflecting this between these two we have space right so this space we are utilizing for these gillis temporal approach so between the temporal fascia and the temporalis muscle we have the space which is used uh, in which we are putting either the bristo elevator now bristo was the uh, was the old ancient time approach now we use the rose zygomatic elevator because it has two beaks so one beak is used for stabilization another one for elevation so we are elevating the zygomatic arch now bristo has only one so bristo there was actually uh, chances of complication of the temporal bone so now we use this rose zygomatic elevator and we elevate the fractured zygomatic bone so we are putting it outward so like that if the fracture is there and we are putting it back into its place and before that we are palpating the step deformity so we come to know that now that this is okay so this is the gillies temporal approach this is the basic of the gillies temporal approach so this gillies temporal approach is gillies this give uh, this approach use this approach and because it is utilized in the temporal region so this technique describes a temporal incision suppose here is the here is the ear right so we are going from the helix anterior helix of the ear we are going 2 centi 2.5 cm uh, ahead superior and 2.5 cm anterior so we are going from here distance is going to be 2.5 cm from here distance is going to be 2.5 cm from either sides and we are making an incision so the incision we are making is of 2 cm length so a 2 cm length incision we are putting 2.5 cm anterior to the helix anterior to the helix and 2 and 2.5 cm superior to the helix so temporal reach tem temporal incision is given that gillies gave a temporal incision he first put the temporal incision that is why the gillies temporal incision but we have to make sure about the we have to be careful about the superficial temporal artery we don't want to damage the superficial temporal artery and we have to put incision between the super the anterior and the posterior part of the superficial artery now once you have dissected it so uh, once you have reached the subcutaneous then you have reached the superficial temporal fascia then you go down so when you are giving this incision first of all you have to give reach the first of all you have to reach the superficial temporal fascia then also you have to go deep down so you have to basically 
incise the whole of the temporal fascia so the whole of the fascia because it is thick white thick dense white so we'll come to know that this is the fascia and once you have reached this fascia then you have to go deep down in the uh, fascia and then you have to insert an instrument uh, this is the 2 cm like that so then you have to insert the instrument within this fascia and if you can see and then you have to go insert the instrument and you have to uh, use a back and forth motion. So you have to use this back and forth motion until and unless you reach the zygomatic arch. Now if I reflect it, see as you can see, we have reached the, see, this is the fascia. I have reflected the fascia to show you how we have reached still the zygomatic arch. Now this instrument which, which we are using, either it can be a bridge to elevator, but now we use the row zygomatic elevator. Now this zygomatic elevator is inserted just deep uh, to the and depressed and it is uh, the depressed zygomatic arch is used, is forwardly placed. So the zygomatic arch which was depressed earlier, now we are putting an outward motion. So like that we are putting an outward motion and we are checking that the zygomatic arch now is in its proper position. But we have to make sure that we have to take care not to fulcrum of the squamous part of the temporal bone. Now you know that liver principle how it works. If I have to put I have to correct something here then the pressure should be this side. So I, I have to make sure that I am not fracturing the squamous part of because I am pre taking pressure like this. See because I am taking pressure like this. So the squamous part of the temporal bone is hitting. So I have to make sure that not to fracture the squamous part of the temporal bone. And then we have to close the suture. So this is about the Gillies temporal approach. But since we are going from the hairline, because here also we have hairline, so there are some chances of hair loss. So scar alopecia, because of the scar there may be some chances of, but that is very small, actually 2 cm, but still that is an aesthetic. So this is about the Gillies temporal approach, which is an indirect approach to reduce the zygomatic fracture. So we are using the row zygomatic elevator, which has one is the elevating blade which is elevating and another one is the stabilizing blade which is stabilizing them. And this is how we do it. So this is how we correct it. It has two beaks. If you can see it has two beak. One beak. One beak is going. Yes. So see this is not the Gillies temporal approach. This is the intra or trans oral approach. But this is how one beak you are placing inside the zygomatic arch and one beak is utilized for the stabilization. So this one is the row zygomatic elevator which has two beaks. So that finishes the Gillies temporal approach. I hope that you guys have enjoyed today's video and you have understood the Gillies temporal approach and if you have enjoyed the video then give it a thumbs up and if you enjoy watching our channel and if you enjoy listening to me then subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it yet and share videos with your friends stay safe take care keep reading and i'll see you soon